Good morning, guys. This is Jacob Bolger, artist sculptor, and today we're going to make a fantasy tree. We're going to sculpt it in clay, and the first thing I'm going to do is make a little mound to work on, and then I'm going to roll a new clay about this size for um, the stock of the tree. And uh, I'm going to put it on there. Now, not always, depending on the application, the best thing, though, is when you're sculpting and joining one piece of clay to another is to do this. It's called scoring. And what that does is it actually creates a little mud if the tool is wet that you're using. And so when you put the two together, they kind of interlock like that and they become one piece now another way to add, add something without doing scoring is you can put it on there like that blending in from all sizes and then taking bits of clay around it going around it like that too you know, make it, make it one. I'm making a fantasy tree, so probably not going to be like your conventional tree, right? <laughs> oh, I'm going to go right into forming it. <clears throat> now the clay is uh, called Marblex, and... Uh, I've been sculpting with it for over three decades, and as you can see, it performs very well. Um, there'll be a tool and supply list in the video description down below the video, and there will be uh, some resources and sources and places you can go and buy it online. piece here and then keep, keep going and strength, strengthen the bottom of the tree a little bit the uh, stalk of the tree Now you can take little bits of or rolled noodles of clay and start working on roots also. And then once you get you know some of that on there you can actually start adding to it. You can add offshoots or what have you. You also can take bits of clay and you can beef it up. It's not hard. Once you see, have these little small shapes, like the mules of clay or the shapes of clay, and they assemble the figure and you can see it then, you know how you got there because you just assembled simple figures or shapes together to do that. But then once you're there, you can go so much further just by taking little bits of clay and adding them to bulk up the pieces that you put on and to actually make them into, to make it into a sculpture. You know, a nice sculpture. <laughs> Now, if you want to take a break, what you can do is uh, wet your sculpture a little bit. You can mist it with a little bit of water. You can take a 
spray it like this from your kitchen or whatever and give it a mist of water. Cover it with plastic. And uh, take a break. But I wouldn't leave it like that for too long by itself. Maybe a day or so you want to come back and check it and make sure it's not drying out on you. And, uh, and also you want to wet your clay probably every, you know, 15 to 20 minutes while you're working on it. Especially in the winter if you have the heat on because it's really dry, it tends to be really dry in the house. You know, you definitely want to wet your, your sculpture frequently. Now, I, uh, when I'm sculpting, I, I tend to work all around the sculpture while I'm going for it. And, uh, pay attention to the back, too. But, yeah, I'll go around the sculpture. Part of the reason why I do that, instead of just working one area, is so that I can, first of all, not get bored working for one area, but also kind of pay attention to the form of the piece. Um, and, and be kind of looking at it and working it from all directions. Uh, off screen, I'm going to be rolling shapes of clay, just like I showed you uh, earlier. And the way you do that, you just roll it between the palms of your hands. But it's kind of hard to do that on screen. So uh, I'm just going to be doing it off screen. And that's why uh, I rolled a bunch of them to, before I started, kind of had them laying off the side here. Now I am kind of like, Trying to create like this really nice, relaxed, artistic uh, form, you know, where it's kind of smooth and flowing. I mean, it's not crinkly, it's not jagged, you know. At least for this design that I'm doing, that's kind of how I'm going to make it. See, I'm um, adding in the, uh, and it's, you know, starkly different than it was in the beginning, isn't it? Just in a few minutes, you can see that it's just a lot different than what it was. definitely do not want to build a form of some kind of rigid material like tin foil or wire and put that inside here because this tree this clay will shrink and if you have a rigid form in there when it shrinks it will crack around it when people are experiencing problems with cracking clay you know your sculpture is cracking uh, on you it's probably either not very good clay that you probably should buy the clay that your teachers are recommending uh, not just anything that you see on the market because not all of it is good that's for sure um and uh the other reason would be 
you know, that you put something inside of it, thinking that it would strengthen it or it would make it less bulky or you wouldn't use as much clay. But uh, this clay is very uh, economical. Um, last time I checked, uh, it was $45 for 25 pounds. And you can get five pounds for roughly 15, I think. adding to it, you know, sculpting it. Now, as you can see, so far I haven't really used any tools except to do a little scoring there to show you. Uh, and I really don't use tools that much. I use my hands, and I recommend that you do the same. Um, but on, on occasion, they do come, they do come in handy a little bit. I'm just kind of going to carve a little definition into this little crotch right here. Now this clay, uh, when it dries, it becomes very, very hard. But it is water-based clay, so it won't be waterproof. You wouldn't want to put this outside. If you did, it would turn into mud in a short period of time after it rained a few days. You know, it rained a couple times, it would ruin it. So don't do that <laughs> with this clay. How I want, you know, the nice thing is it's clay. You can change your mind about which way it's going to go and all that. this branch a little bit. Oh, you know, you know, watch that back, the back of the sculpture. <laughs> you'll be doing, you'll be sculpting away and make your front all beautiful and then you come around to the back and say, oh no, <laughs> how it looks like this. Now, you know, the thing about this, if you're just doing this for the first time and you haven't felt it before, uh, you're just seeing this, first of all, a couple tips. Don't be afraid to try it because a lot of people are just afraid of trying. And, uh, you know, don't be afraid. Don't be one of those people because I, I think if you go and look at any of the sculptures you think, you would like to do if you look in the comment section uh, of you know some of the more watched videos. Some don't get a lot of views, unfortunately, but the ones that were uh, watched. And you look back at the comments, you see people are doing it. They're they're absolutely doing it. And if you look at some of the videos, I actually put some pictures of you know I ask people to send pictures, and if I do, I sometimes I put them in the videos that I make. You know, so you can see people are absolutely doing this. This is not rocket science. You can do this. Absolutely, you can do this. Um, so 
So there's that. But also, the way I sculpt and the way I can move my fingers and stuff like that comes with time. So there will be a learning process, but you, your fingers will adapt. And you, everyone has you know, an ability or, or artistic ability. A lot of people say, oh, I couldn't do that. I'm an artistic bone in my body. Well, that really isn't true because if that was the case, um, you know, like, <laughs> no way. It's not possible. Uh, I just think you, you may be one of those people that didn't try, you know. Uh, but, yeah, everyone's got it in them uh, to make and create and sculpt and what have you. There's no doubt about it. Uh, in my mind. <laughs> just want to kind of stretch it and bring it up a little bit. I want it to be a little bit taller, I think. <laughs> so if I take my hands like this and squeeze, it actually makes it a little skinnier, but it makes it taller at the same time, and then I can go back and build up you know, make it thicker there again. So. Another way is to cut it in half and add a piece of clay and, and then join the pieces together again if you want to do that. Now that's the basic sh shape of the tree. You can see where I'm at with that. I am going to spend some time uh, just working out a little bit. I'm really not going to be doing a lot of addition to it. I'm just going to be shaping it, forming it, smoothing it. It's going to take probably about a half hour for me to do that. And I'm just doing what I'm doing here and a few suggestions really to help you out in the process get a wet paintbrush spend a little time smoothing it because it's first of all it's just a very nice thing to do but it's also um, can kind of give you ideas about how you want what direction you want to go in while not really taking a break from it but actually still paying attention to it um, it's just a, kind of a nice thing to do while you're working is to take a little break to do that. Also, water is like glue for um, sculptures and um, a little bit of water is definitely not gonna hurt it. So, um, you know, that sort of thing. So, I'm gonna be doing that. You also can smooth your fingers. Okay, cause like, a lot of people like ask me how, I mean, how do you sculpt and keep it so smooth? Well, you know, I'm really, First of all, I'm just, the way I put it on, I'm paying attention to, to it as I put the clay on and add bits of clay. I kind of smooth them in as I go. But, you know, I do, uh, as I, you know, sculpt, I do take breaks to do that, to, to smooth and that sort of thing, and just keep the whole sculpture kind of, um, you know, pretty as I'm making it. I mean, I don't want it to be all clunky the whole way. I really want it to be kind of, um, you know, pretty as I go. So I, I do pay attention to that smoothness and that sort of thing as I'm going. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time on it, and, uh, and then we'll be back. Okay, I'm just doing, uh, just going around. Just spending a little bit of time on it and uh, getting it to where I want it to be and I'm just show you that you can, you know, as long as you're keeping your clay moist and you're wetting it from time to time, you should be able to move the pieces around, the branches around. You'll be able to do that with no problem. And when you're doing that, just try to keep everything nice smooth and flowing you see that right it's not it's all nice and curving and nice like i've been spending a lot of time on the front that's for 
and not so much on the back, which is uh, easy, easy thing to fall into um, doing. So, yeah. huh. Definitely want to pay attention to everything. Now another thing you want to do as you're sculpting is taking a look at your piece from all angles so that you see that everything that you see from is still smooth and sm flowing from all angles and you can use your, t your t uh, thumb just to kind of drag it across it and just kind of achieve that nice even you know everything the surface is becoming even by my doing that see that it's That is a way also to smooth clay. You know, it's not just you go sculpt it and then you know it's all so crazy rough and you have to spend nine hours smoothing it. You know what I'm saying? Smooth as you go. Check your work as you go. Look around from all angles and you know smooth that plane so it's. Nice and flowing from all angles. See how the area I'm working right there? I want it to be nice and round. And that's kind of a, something you should definitely be paying attention to as you're sculpting your piece. Yeah, sculpting smooth, you know, that's basically the idea behind it. You know, do the sculpture smooth so it's, uh, so that at the end of the day, when you're done sculpting, your piece isn't really so crazy rough, you know, because you pay attention to that as you went. And I think that's the one thing, if there's one thing that people say they have a problem with, it, it's that, you know, especially with polymer clay, I've heard. I I don't have a lot of problems with that, whether no matter what kind of clay I'm sculpting with, and the reason why is because of that, because I'm I'm paying attention to the smoothness as I go. Well, I will give you some other tips, and then I have another one for you in just a sec. This may surprise you, but you can take, if you have your clay has dried on you and it's gotten stiff and you can't really work it now, or you're, uh, you know, it's gotten so stiff that you can't smooth it and you don't know what to do, this is what you do. You take a paper towel like this, lay it across your sculpture, and get the get it wet like that and form it around your sculpture like, your, like this see? and just form it around it and cover the sculpture with it um, and uh, then wrap it in a plastic bag and check on it in an hour it'll probably be okay if it's really really dried out if you forgot about it and left it out overnight you might have to wrap it and keep it for a day or so or two to get it back to a soft form but it will come back. <clears throat> as long as you haven't put a finish on it or painted it or done something like that because uh, that would mess it up. But, um, but yeah, the clay could come back, sure. And if you have small bits of clay that have dried out and are hard and now, and like here's, a, here's a piece from earlier sculpt. It's hard as a rock. Well, you just wrap it in the wet wash off put it in a plastic bag, and in a day or so, you'll have soft clay again. So there's, I 
think from now on, all my, all my tutorials, I'm going to start sharing hacks like that because, I mean, it just causes so much grief to people, you know. You know, they spend a lot of time making something and it just doesn't work out for them. And, and then they quit, unfortunately. And that's a, it's such a shame, really, you know, when people quit because they didn't know better. I'm taking little bits of clay and I'm kind of, I don't know if you saw that here, but you see this like little hump here that I made and this one here that I made? Well, I want to do it in this sense too. It really looks very really pretty. It's a nice little thing you can do to make the branches like a little bit more, you know, give them more depth and interest and that sort of thing. Now the roots I'm keeping fairly simple. I'm just, I don't really have like offshoots and that sort of thing, which I could do, but I, I'm not gonna probably do it because I feel like I, I like the way that looks like that. So I'm just gonna kind of go with that idea. Beat this out with the base there a little bit. Side is looking terrible. I need to spend some time on this side. You can see that. Isn't it awful? <laughs> Don't do that. Don't be that guy. Okay, I'm doing I'm doing something here. I want to make sure you can see. I'm doing a little bit of carving where the roots join the base of the little, what we'll call stone, I guess. <laughs> and I'm just carving it to kind of give some definition there. And see here. pushes branches in the way a little bit, but I'll just show you kind of how I'm doing that. I spent some time on the back, so not so bad now. <laughs> that uh, everything is you know, smooth and pristine and um, I mean I'm definitely going to have to do some smoothing on this still and I'm going to show you how to do that um, how, how would you do that so uh, now you know if uh, if you have to get it wet uh, you know and you want to wrap it in paper towels to get it softer so you can do the smoothing uh, I don't recommend getting your brush soaking wet. I actually recommend like wiping it off on a cloth or a paper towel when you're smoothing. I also recommend like for the first, uh, until you start getting it really, really smooth, um, use like an oil bristle brush because it's more firm than other brushes. And uh, so... It does help, and you can see it really does take it down, uh, you know, to a, a much smoother uh, place. And then uh, you, what you can do is you see the paint will get work filled with, uh, the paintbrush will get full of clay, so it's helpful to wipe it off, get a little bit of water on it, and wipe it off again on the, on the paper towel or the cloth you've got. And then, because uh, you know, you... Uh, some people get all soaking wet and it just makes a mess. You don't need to make a mess. And I, you know, I don't skimp on this step. You know, I take my time. You know, sometimes I'll 
a glass of wine or something with the, and uh, hang out with a friend while I do it or something like that, you know. Or, you know, just a nice meditative thing to do. And then you can also, uh, you know, when you're smoothing, uh, you can use it to actually, you know, get in these, like, little recessed areas and really, it's kind of, you can even, in a way, use it to carve while you're smoothing, you know, you see me do that. I'm actually applying quite a bit of pressure to this little mound, you know, here. And see the paint brush just fills up with water. I'm with paint, excuse me. I'm not paint, clay. <laughs> A little bit distracted, it's Christmas Eve. And I have friends coming and uh, I haven't even like cleaned up or anything. I've been sculpting and painting all for like like three weeks straight. I haven't really cleaned anything up. It's really a mess actually in here. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so I gotta get a little bit distracted. So I may misspeak a little bit. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so, yeah. And I just uh, go around, take my time. Again, I'm paying attention to a plane. See how that's like, it goes like that and it comes down. Of course, that's exaggerated, but like, if I were to pay attention to that more, by pressing on it, sculpting it, using the paintbrush, that sort of thing, I can make that area a lot better. And that's the kind of thing you want to pay attention to. And it may, it may seem like it would be time consuming to do that, but since you're already there doing the sculpture and you're sculpting and you're smoothing and you're, uh, you know, thinking about it, that sort of thing, you know, or just admiring your work, you can take your time and do it. It's not a big deal, right? It won't take that long. Um, and then, yeah. So after that, uh, I'm going to spend a little bit of time smoothing and I'm going to come back. Okay, so now uh, I've got the uh, sculpture kind of smooth. It's not like really, really smooth. And the reason why is I want to put texture in it and I don't have to like take it to this really pristine state because I want to texture it. And I'm going to use this ball tool um, to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start like at the top here and... I'm going to just put nice flowing lines into clay to make this like texture. And I'm just going to slowly go down, you know, down the trunk like that. And just try to make these nice smooth flowing textual lines. And you know, the markings I'm making are intentional, okay? So, um, if you're just finding yourself, you know, aimlessly, you know, doing that, that's not what I'm doing here. So, you know, really trying to make everything really kind of uh, nice and flowing and just fun. Yeah, I sort I think it's really actually a beautiful way to make texture. 
like that. And following the grain or and this will also uh, smooth um, in a way uh, be a way to smooth um, if you're having a trouble smoothing it's not working for you adding texture to your sculpture not only can make it very beautiful but it also can solve problems like that Now I do, um, you know, take my fingers and, or a cloth, you can use a cloth, and I wipe the ball tool frequently. If you don't do that, you're gonna just, you'll be putting uh, bits of clay into your work. So I do like that. I do wanna keep the tool clean. Now I keep, uh, I do keep my finger of the clays. It's getting harder, but it's not, it's still fairly soft. So I like hold my finger behind it when I'm doing this so that it doesn't push it, you know. See what I'm doing here, right? So I'll do that for a while and we'll come back. Okay, so I've got the texture. And now one thing I would really recommend that you do before your sculpture dries, you're going to have a wire tool like this. You'll get that with your uh, sculpting tools. Usually. I mean, and if you don't, you should maybe ask for it. But you put that in the back of your sculpture, you got, I'm using a yogurt lid that I'm working on here. So I want to separate it from that. So I'm going to hold it to the back of the sculpture down to the board with my fingers. I'm going to hold it like that and then just cut it away from the base. If I didn't do that and try to pick up the sculpture um, without doing that, it, it would be a mess. <laughs> And then, uh, and then you want to, uh, you know, get that area down there finished. Look at it from the bottom. If you have uh, any gaps like that, you can fill them in. It's a good idea to fill them in or, you know, just smooth it and uh, that sort of thing. Now, if there's any, like, little bits of clay that you don't want to be on there... When this sculpture dries, I highly recommend you take them off now because this clay dries so hard, man. <laughs> it's really... I was doing a sculpture earlier and it, it was dry and I was getting ready to put the finish on it and there was this tiny little piece of clay. It was a tiny little piece of clay. I could not get it off, man. It's still there. <laughs> I mean, you can't really see it, but I really like to like pay attention to what I'm doing, all, you know, all the way around on my pieces. So um, I don't really like to see stuff like that too much, you know. But you can see what I'm doing here, right? So I'm like, I'm, you know, getting that base, you know, finished the way I want. And then, uh, and then I'll just set it back down. And, uh, you know, when I'm finished with it and I like it the way, you know, it's the way I want, uh, that's when I'll say, okay, I'll leave it alone and let it dry. Um, 
This clay is very versatile as far as drying goes. You can definitely just leave it out and just let it dry for a couple of days. Uh, and I've done things like blowtorch dried it so I could make a mold. Um, I've put it in the oven to dry it um, so I could do finishes faster. Um, it's really, I mean, you can do that. The clay doesn't, doesn't hurt it. To me, I mean, I've, I have clay, I've clay pieces that I've had for 30 years, and they're fine. <laughs> and I've moved a number of times, too, so, I mean, they get bumped around, all kinds of things. So, yeah, um, but that is basically it in a nutshell. Now, I will maybe later on do a, I might do a tutorial on how to, do, to finish it. I have to think about how I want to finish it. But the finished piece is probably going to be in the thumbnail because I like doing that. <laughs> I've been doing it lately and people seem to like it. So um, that's about it. I hope you found this to be interesting and helpful. If you make a tree perhaps like this uh, from this video, I would love to see a picture of it. Please send it to me, okay? There'll be contact information in the video description down below the video. Where you can send pictures and write to me. And I will respond, absolutely. And sometimes I put uh, pictures of people's uh, students' sculptures in uh, my tutorials. So I've done that a couple of times, actually. So if I like it really, I like what you did, I might do that. Uh, so... There's always that chance, and uh, I hope you will definitely try it. Don't be afraid to try. It's really a fun thing to do, uh, and uh, yeah. If you like this kind of content, I have over 500 tutorials on my channel on sculpting and painting, and how to do full finishes. And uh, yeah, so that's about it. Please give the video a like. And uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. I will reply. Leave them in the comment section. Tell me where you're watching from. Definitely leave me some kind of comment. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you for your support. And have a great day. Bye-bye.